In this video, we will continue practicing this new kind of margin of error, which leads us to confidence intervals involving z-score and standard deviation. Not to be confused with the old way of calculating margin of error, where we simply did 1 over the square root of the sample size. That was a, a simpler time. But as we discuss confidence intervals, we will now be using this formula. For the z-score, we will be using the z-scores from this table. All right, so if I want a 98, if I want to be 98% confident that the truth is within my interval, I'm going to use this z-score, for example. Number four, when people smoke, the nicotine they absorb is converted to cotinine, cotinine, which can be measured. A sample of 30 smokers has a mean cotinine level of 172.5. Assuming that sigma, standard deviation, is known to be 119.5, find a 90% confidence interval. Uh, estimate the mean cotinine level of all smokers. It says 90% confidence interval, so that means we'll be using a z-score of 1.645 as we do this formula right here. So here's the setup. It's the z-score times the um, standard deviation, all right, or sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. They said a sample of 30 smokers. So we're just going to put this in our calculator. So there you go, and there you go. 35.89. All right, so to build my interval, I'm going to take this and add and subtract from the sample mean. All right, the sample had this mean. So um, let me just switch colors for fun. All right, so I'm going to take that mean of uh, 172.5, and I'm going to subtract the margin of error, and I'm going to add the margin of error. Okay, and that should give us the actual 90% confidence interval. All right, so here is our 90% confidence interval. We can be 90% sure that the actual um, mean nicotine level, uh, or sorry, cotinine level of all smokers is somewhere within this interval. All right, let's move on and look at problem number five. The number of days with temperatures above freezing for a sample of 35 cities has a mean of 190.7 days and a sample standard deviation of 54.2 days. Find the 95% confidence interval for the mean number of days with temperatures above freezing. Well, for a 95% level of confidence, we're going to use a z-score of 1.96. So we do uh, plus or minus a z-score times the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And uh, that should give us our margin of error. So there you go, and there you go. 17.96, got to round up. All right, so to build the confidence interval, I need to take this and I need to uh, add and subtract um, with the sample mean. Um, let's see, where is that pesky sample mean? All right, the sample mean was 190.7 days. So to build my confidence interval, I'm going to start with 190.7 and I will subtract 17.96 and I will take my 190.7 and 
and I will add 17.96. Okay, thus the plus or minus. Okay, so I'll just do that. All right, so this is my 95% confidence interval. If I want the 98% uh, confidence interval, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, um, except uh, I will have to use a z-score of 2.33 if I want a 98% level of confidence. All right, so here's the setup. Um, the only thing that changed was uh, I went from this z-score to this z-score. Um, this turns out to be uh, 21.35 if I put this in my calculator. Okay, so I will now use this margin of error, again adding and subtracting from the mean. All right, so that would look just like this. So here's my 98% confidence interval. Now notice, if we want more confidence, all right, we went from 95 to 98%. Uh, you can be more confident if you have a wider interval. And notice that this is a little bit lower and a little bit higher than these two numbers. So this is wider, which is why we can be more confident than we were before intelligence quotient suppose managers of a corporation want to estimate the IQ score for their employees how many employees must they randomly select for IQ test if the managers want to be 95 percent confident that the sample mean is within two IQ points of the true population mean they know from previous studies that the standard deviation is 15 points okay so this is the formula for margin of error where we do the z-score times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. They're asking us how many employees must be selected. So we're looking for n, the sample size. Again, I got the z-score because we want a 95% confidence level and uh, that's 1.96 z-score. All right, now they told us what the margin of error should be. We want um, the sample mean to be within two IQ points. So this margin of error should equal two, all right, because you take that and you do your plus or minus. Um, so all we have to do is somehow solve this for n. So what I would do is uh, I would divide both sides by 1.96. All right, that way these cancel out. So, so far, that's going to leave me with 15. I guess I don't need the parentheses anymore. That's going to leave me with 15 over the square root of n is equal to whatever this is. 2 over 1.96, okay? 2 over 1.96. Okay, so I get this decimal. Now, I don't want to round it, so I hit toggle, all right, the little double arrow, and it turned it into a nice fraction for me, 50 over 49. So that's what I'm going to use. All right, so this is the same thing as 50 over 49. Okay, now... I'm trying to solve this for the square root of n. Um, so there's a couple different things I can do. Um, I could take this fraction and swap it with the radical n, which is probably what I would do if no one were looking. I'm just afraid, uh, afraid I'm going to confuse people. So I think instead I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, all right, so if I cross multiply, then that's going to give me 50 radical n, all right, going this way, is equal to 15 times 49. All right, so it's 15 times 49, 735. So that's equal to 735. 
Notice I have not done any rounding at all. Then I will divide both sides by 50. So that's going to give me the square root of n is equal to, all right, 735 divided by 50, all right, 14.7. Don't have to round, so I can use that, 14.7. Finally, to get n, I'm going to square both sides, all right, square, square. All right, so 14.7 squared. All right, that's giving me 216.09. Okay, um, so we're talking about people so we're just going to round this to the nearest whole number so they would need to uh, include 216 employees in the survey alright last problem number seven during TV commercial breaks the time between uses of the remote control by males um, we have a 90 percent confidence sample size 25 um, sample mean of 5.24 seconds. The population is a bell cur curve, normal distributed, and um, there is a sample standard deviation of 2.5 seconds. Find the margin of error. Well, they just gave us all this information, so um, we should be able to use this formula, okay, for margin of error. So z score times standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Um, so here I go. So uh, my z-score, well, they, they told me the 90% uh, confidence level. Okay, so uh, at 90%, the z-score is 1.645. Okay, so margin of error equals plus or minus 1.645. Um, standard deviation is 2.5 seconds. All right, square root of the sample size. Okay, they told us n is 25 straight up. Um, okay, that's all we need to find the margin of error. So we will just put this in our calculator. So um, this is how you would type it in, and this is what you get. All right, 0.8225. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it as 0.82. So there's my margin of error. All right, um, don't forget we are talking about seconds. Um, now, find a confidence interval for estimating the population mean. So uh, for the confidence interval, all we need to do is take the sample mean, all right, which is right here, and um, subtract and add the margin of error. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to do um, the 5.24 seconds. I'm going to subtract. 0 0.82 and then I will take the sample mean 5.24 seconds and I will add 0 0.82 okay so we can be 90 percent sure that out in the population the average number of seconds that a male um, will grab the remote is somewhere between 4.42 seconds and 6.06 .06 seconds. All right, that is it for this lesson.